Uh, hi, everyone. I uh, hope everybody had a great weekend. Um, and uh, thanks for coming and watching another episode of Monday Night Draw with uh, uh, Meredith and Dave. Good evening. Today, um, we're going to be drawing, well, I'm going to be drawing uh, Batman. Uh, this is going to be based on uh, a shot from. I'm sorry. I always. <laughs> I know. I'm just. It's going to be based. Delayed, on, delayed reaction time tonight. On a shot from Tim Sale. Um, we just found out this weekend that Tim Sale passed away. Uh, Meredith told me a few days before that that he was in the hospital, which was, uh, you know, pretty concerning anyway. And we, we've been, you know, pretty close for, for quite, a, quite a while. Ever since we spent quite a while in Spain, it was yeah. like a week there, wasn't it? I mean, it, was, it was a good long time. Yeah. yeah. A week um, with somebody will make you friends. Yes. And, you know, we both Tim saw was just him. so sweet. He was. We both just saw him at other conventions. I managed to have dinner with him a few times uh, since then. And, um, yeah, he was, you know, it, I, I'm not really enjoying lately. We're, we're losing so many people. Uh, it's, it's been a ridiculous year of loss in comics. Yeah. Ridiculous. Uh, it needs to end now. Yeah, I would really like to not keep doing this, uh, especially for someone like Tim Sale, who is, you know, um, I don't have a lot of huge friends, you know, I'm, I don't have a lot of friends. And I considered Tim to be a friend. And uh, it's, you know, Meredith, you go ahead. I'm going to start drawing Batman. Okay. You, you're just, Dave's tired. He's out golfing all day. It was a, for charity. Yeah, it was a charity tournament today, and um, we had a ringer, so we actually did pretty well. But yeah, it's a lot of time out in the sun, and it was cutting the grass yesterday, which is an all day affair. Again, time out in the sun. Yeah, nothing so, else. It didn't get like ridiculously hot. They're saving that for tomorrow. And I feel like my my camera makes my face a little bit red, but really, it's red. I'm, you didn't wear sunscreen today, did you? Suffer. Oh, David. When Dave has no face left because they had to cut it all off for skin cancer. We all know why. You heard it here, people. He doesn't believe in sunscreen. I don't take aspirin. I don't do any of that stuff. He doesn't. He does not believe in self-care. Thankfully, your wife does. At least I feed you well. Yeah. To the best of my abilities. And Eagle, Ergle, sorry. I should brought my, I need to bring my glasses down. I'm tired. You want to say a few things about Tim before you? Oh, just like, I remember, it's so funny. You guys don't see this side of Dave, but whenever he gets around people who he really respects and looks up to as an artist, he has an inability to talk to them and i think because when we first met i didn't really know anything about comics i had no problem although maybe that doesn't come as a surprise that i would have no problem talking to people and we were in spain dave was so excited he's like oh my gosh we're in spain with tim sale and he loves love loves tim's work and so i just started talking to tim and i mean you go for dinner with everybody because we're all you know North Americans in a new land, and the com conventions are always amazing about getting everybody together. It's really cool. In a lot of ways, we're kind of like honorary Americans when you leave. You know, it's close yeah. enough. I said North Americans. Yeah. Okay. There you go. And yeah. David Macho was um, in charge of the convention, and we all went out together. <coughs> Who is Spanish, actually? So he's he's, he's not he's not North American at all. No, David Macho was in charge of the convention. That's right. Yeah, he was running the show. I'm talking. And all right, sorry. I'm not actually listening to the words that I'm saying. All right, so you're you correcting go. me. All right, go, go, go. I'm being very clear. Turn, turn off your thinking brain and just put on your drawing brain tonight. Let it go. Anyway, um, I, I started talking to Tim and I arranged to get a sketch for Dave. And one of the things that is very important to me as a wife of a professional is that the professional gets paid for their work. And a lot of times artists feel obliged to give other artists work for free. So 
at that show, I stood in line. I waited for David's sketch. I I watched him draw it, and he even signed it for you. Yeah. The Spanish part, of Dave. So. And then ever since then, we've just been like, I just love him. Like we talk on Facebook and we see each other at conventions and he's just such, such a kind, he was such a kind, good hearted, genuine person. And, um, he'll be missed. Like it, this one hit me hard. I gotta be honest. Yeah. I I've had, I've been struggling with it. I've been struggling that I won't see Tim at any more conventions because I really cared for him. Yeah. So, um, so there, that's my Tim sale tribute. And apparently my mic is going in and out again. Say something. I've been talking the whole time. It's registering. Here. So if you didn't hear that Tim Sale tribute, you can all thank Dave. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, you have to infer the in the blank spaces, I guess. And now it's great. So th this is uh, this is based on uh, the mic is fine on my end, says one mighty R. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, Larry Lambert says it's good now. Yeah, I. <clears throat> have some audio processing on you have to turn those it like as a default yeah. it just doesn't work and i turned it back on because i was doing a video and left it on so anyway it's your fault like i said yeah like i said so all right let's start the rest of the night with the first super chat from chow win for nine dollars and ninety nine cents. Cheers to you, Dina. Much love to you guys and Tim Sale. Cheers to Tim. Hashtag cheers to patches. Hope you guys are well. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Art nine says RIP Tim Sale. It really was Allison says Tim was taken far too soon. He was he was only sixty six, like ridiculous. Yeah, yeah sixty six seems pretty it's, old when you're really young. It, it, like, uh, when we're that close to 50. Well, you're close. I, I'm there. I'm not there yet. Yeah, you got time. I got time. But yeah, 66 is, is young. <clears throat> it's really so. younger than than is uh, fair to, to see someone go. Greg L. Static Art has a super chat for $1.99. Hey, DNM. RIP Tim. Look forward to this pick. Thank you, Greg. Appreciate it. And Zayu says, Tim was awesome. He drew a Mary Jane on a Spider Man blank for me. It's packed deep away in storage right now. He just, you know who he reminds me of? His ability to do. So much with a paintbrush and shadow. Mm -hmm. He's not, he reminds me of Jay Lee in that yeah. way. There's, there's like a genius that they, they can do so much with so little. Well, it's, it's having an, an incredible sense of design. Yes. And, and, and a confidence to go your own way. Yeah. And be your own person. Like, there will not be anybody who is ever like Tim. There will not be anybody who is ever like Jay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They are they are unique individuals. Yes. And, um, and we really appreciate knowing them and uh, that they share their gift with us. So, yeah. Random Pat has a super chat for $5. So sad to hear about Tim Sale. His art was uniquely striking. His work showed that he deeply understood the core of every character that he drew. RIP. Not just the world or the, the character, but the, really the world that they inhabit. And that's a, a big thing for me with mm -hmm. Tim Sale's work is uh, he just created. 
for a style that's very, very uh, uh, design and um, uh, style heavy, it, it was an incredibly believable world. All of his comics always had that in common. Incredible storytelling. He he could just make a shot truly big in a way that uh, you don't see very often at all. Yeah. I mean, we all draw splash pages, but uh, it's very rare you see the kind of shot that, that Tim could pull off. Yeah. Daniel Castelli has a super chat for 499. Daniel says, I remember seeing Tim's work on the show Heroes and immediately bought up all his work. He and Jeff Loeb made such magic. RIP to a true legend. Yeah, I, I forgot about Heroes, actually. Was that Tim on Heroes? Yeah, that was all Crazy. his artwork. That was before I even really cared about comics when that show was out. Yeah. You're like, that's Tim Sale, and you can stop talking about it. I remember you talking about the artist on the show, and I was like, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah. Because for me, it's never, I mean, I didn't even know Tim at the time. Well, but neither did I. Yeah. I mean, I, I knew who this was, but yeah. Allison McGlone says, Tim's passing hit me like Mike Turner. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's unexpected and. So let's talk about something positive in the sense that we're going to say, I hope everybody who's a father on the stream had a wonderful Father's Day. And everybody who's not a father, I hope that you had a good Father's Day with your father. Did you have a good Father's Day, Dave, cutting the grass? <laughs> I had a great Father's Day. Did you do exactly what you wanted to do? Uh, I did, actually. Yeah, nothing more relaxing than just cutting the grass. And then we uh, are... are um, middle son is uh, a bartender at a, a restaurant pretty close to here. And so we went and um, he crashed <laughs> at the bar and drove him crazy for, you know, he was slammed. He was, did slammed. you talk to him? He I said did. he talked to you last night. Yeah, He tried to apologize to me and I told him we were mad at him. Yeah. He said, I talked to dad. I'm like, sure he did. Oh no, he did. And so you're not forgiven. You'll go back. Yeah. Okay. I got this huge apology. I'm like, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. But yeah, he was pretty upset about it. He he was really, really slammed. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, we didn't get the best service. I'll put it that way. <laughs> but you know what? But we did sit at the bar so we could be with them. Yeah. We weren't there for the service, but yeah, there were people at the bar trying to get him to do shots with them and hold. You know, it was it was crazy. So it was probably not the best time. But... He's pretty good about it though. He's like, yeah, no man, I can't. It's very yeah. cool. And they're like, well, okay, no problem. Yeah. All right, so I spent my day picking rocks. Some people are like picking rocks, like seriously picking rocks. Six, I don't know how many tons, how many hundreds of pounds, <clears throat> but a lot, maybe close to a ton. Yeah. I don't know how many rocks is a ton, but we filled the back of our gator six times. So we, um, we have a hay field. And the hay was ready to to be cut, and it we got it cut a couple of days ago, and and uh, we don't have the equipment to do it. So the guy that that did it for us uh, said, "Look, I, is I, doing our hay because it's more than just one time, yeah, like it's like said, a I, process, right? I can't uh, collect it without removing some of the rocks from the field. Something we should have known, and so." Uh, unfortunately, we had a day's notice, and I had a golf tournament, the charity thing that I could not break out of. As a matter of fact, we actually had a few people from our group um, cancel, and we had a, a really difficult time replacing the, the people that had already canceled weeks before. So I, there's no way. So I got out does of that, picking rocks. Does that mean you're going to help me pick rocks tomorrow? Meredith, I got a job to do. I know. I'm teasing you. I'm like, you're just like, oh, I couldn't pick rocks today because I had this, but yeah. I. I don't know what to tell you. No, I've I know. Been able to really work I'm properly. hoping. I'm hoping that the two boys that were here today can come again tomorrow. Otherwise, it'll be Meredith picking rocks. Uh, look, if that's the case, I'm going to have to help, but I don't have time. I know, it's fine. I'll do it. it it'll get done over the course of the summer. Lady Midnight has a super chat for five dollars. Hello, DM. I don't know much about comic artists. I'm not familiar with his work. But I can tell you meant a lot too, and I'm sorry for your loss. Yeah, thank thank you, you so much, Lady Mc Midnight. Yeah, uh, it's 
you know, there, there's the effect that somebody's work has on you. And then there's actually, uh, you know, knowing the person and, and, uh, and just liking them as a person, like liking having them around, knowing they're around and, uh, Art Nine says, today I happened to watch the film again, Batman the Long Halloween. And then some guy offered to sell it to me. Batman by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale Omnibus. And tonight, everything matches. <laughs> Xander Malcolmson says, hearing the news absolutely ruined my week. Spider-Man Blue is my favorite comic of all time. Tim was one of the guys I would have liked to meet one day. Yeah, there, there are a few artists. Uh, Jack Kirby, notably for me, passed away the year before I got into comics. I never got the chance to meet him, and that would have been incredible, you know? But I I missed that one, unfortunately. And there are others that have passed over the years that I was fortunate enough to, to get to meet and uh, get to know more or less, depending, you know, for the most part. Uh, um Truthfully, without Meredith, I'm not the most talkative person in the whole world. So he wouldn't be talking to Art Adams if not for his wife. No, and now we're friends. Yeah. So there you go. Um. Hold on. Somebody asked what the kids did for you for. Oh, Kevin Mandevil said, "What do the kids do for Dave?" Kevin, they ignored him. Which I feel truly was the best Father's Day gift you could have got. Yeah, that's not entirely true. I got a mug. Did, oh, yeah. Hayden got you a mug and a McDonald's gift card. Right. Hayden always does something. Yeah. That's, Hayden, that's because Hayden staff always do something. Yeah. They're very good. I'm, I'm really not much of a gift person. He really, really is not a gift person. He hates gifts. Like, hates them. He does not like them. I don't know why. I, on the other hand, gift away, Dave. <laughs> gift away. You get. You know what? The best gift I have is you. Having you as my husband. Okay. Okay. Stop. Is the greatest oh, gift no. you could ever give me. You truly saying this just to bother me? Look. Well, I'm saying it because it's true, but I also take delight in the fact that it also makes you extremely uncomfortable yeah. does make me feel good doing that to you That's great. but i want everybody to know that it doesn't matter that i'm saying it on the stream if i said that to him off the air he would still be just as uncomfortable it literally makes no difference okay. he does not like to oh. be told people love him okay would you, would you seriously stop no because it's funny and it's kind of fun and you know i'm i'm tired physically tired so, so you're gonna take it out on me so i'm gonna take it out on you jdsct is a super chat for twenty dollars good evening david meredith as much as i enjoy watching dave's tributes incorporating their styles with his own it really sucks why and how often we're doing it this year still it is awesome that you do it and thank you 100 yes. <laughs> percent 100%. It's awesome to see. Yeah. Sucks that we're doing it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. And yeah, I'm, um, it's nice to drop Batman again. It's been a little bit. I think I would drop Batman every other stream if I could, but, you know, that would be a lot of Batman. So it's nice to get a chance, if nothing else. Yeah. No. Jimmy Reyes Arts on here. Hola, David Finch and Meredith Finch and Flock. And Jimmy says, by the way, Dave owes me a scan of Spidey. I do. Yes, I know. I'm sorry. And I actually, I saw your text and uh, no excuse for it. I hate it when I text somebody and you can see they saw your text and they didn't respond. Yeah, I just did that. I'm sorry. You're the worst, but everybody knows you and has come to expect it. Tim Teacher says another horse wouldn't hurt. That's in terms of gifts for me. <laughs> the, yeah. I want to say they're coming. Psycho Pomping says, Dave is so sunburned now, we can't see him blush. <laughs> Fair enough. 
The inexorable word nerd says, my wife got me steak and beer and thanked me for fathering our children. Life is good. Three heirs to my throne. That sounds like an awesome Father's Day. Really we does. are delaying Father's Day because I was at a horse. Actually, to be fair, I was at a horse show yesterday. So by the time I got up and got home and like it was a long day for me. So that's why we went out for dinner. And I didn't do anything for my dad either who works his ass off over here. Butt off over here because we're PG. I don't think I can say the ASS word. Um, but anyway, so we're going to do Father's Day this weekend coming. We'll do a delayed steak and baked potato and nice little salad and some grilled asparagus. Unless you have another vegetable you prefer. Brussels uh, sprouts. No, asparagus, whatever. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, food. We'll do food this weekend. We'll push Father's Day a week. Because what dad doesn't want steak? Oh, no. I'm, I'm good with that. Oh, I know. I know you are. I was talking to somebody playing <clears throat> golf, and he uh, he's not eating red meat. He's not what? He's not eating red meat. Who's that? Uh, I can't remember. Rook? No, no. He, he wasn't there, actually. Um, it doesn't matter. But point is, I went through a period of not eating red meat. And I'm thinking, ah, you know, maybe I should be doing that. I don't know. Eating red meat's not your problem. Yeah. <clears throat> Random Pat has a super chat for $20. Dave, I came across an old drawing from 2006 of Spider-Man standing in rubble holding Green Goblin's mask. I know who I was hoping you could show how you drew the rubble, which is mainly wooden planks, like a destroyed warehouse. You know who you drew that one for? Who? I'm almost positive you drew that one for Mike Gautran. Oh, yeah, I did. Actually, you know, you were exactly right. That is right. Uh, sure. Um, hold on. That's from 2006. I just barely knew you, and I remember that sketch. Okay. That is to tell you what a good sketch that was. Uh, mm -hmm. I still remember it. Because yeah. it was a very powerful image. So congratulations to you. If, or maybe you just came across it on Cal McGart bands or something. But maybe. Okay, so uh, I can't remember exactly how Spider-Man was, but I'm just going to sketch him in really quick. He was, Wooden plank rubble. Yeah, but you need to have Spider-Man on it. So I'm just going to put him on. Here's my Spider-Man finger. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. Imagine that's not horribly drawn. And so for the, the planks that are, are underneath them, I'm just going to, I'm going to draw a plank here and uh, put another one here. It can kind of cross through it. Maybe another one here. One here, and I'm basically just kind of interlocking these just randomly. It's uh, it's not really all that important um, where things go, just as long as I, I've got like this one is over these, but then under this, that kind of thing. And it's all very loose right now. So then I just take my eraser, lighten it down, and I'm gonna put some paint over, uh, tighten this up just a little bit. And I'm not worrying about being like doing a negative space drawing in the sense that like this is an upper edge and I'm still drawing it in there. Um, generally speaking, that's not really my style. I like using techniques from it, but I don't usually lose edges. I also, part of the reason I don't lose edges, actually the big reason I did it, I experimented with it years ago. I found it there, it, that's all drawn in. I found that, um, Mostly everything that I do gets colored, and when it gets colored, it can end up looking very odd when there's no edges. Okay, so uh, I'm going to start darkening in. Basically, the further away, if I've got a piece of wood, and I've got a piece of wood here and another one here, 
I can make this piece of wood go underneath that one with a little shadow and I can make this one be much further away by dropping the shadow further away from this piece. Uh, it, so what I'm doing is with a thin shadow here, it's putting that piece of wood up and then a thicker shadow below it pushes whatever is down there further down. And so I can really create a lot of dimension just by how thick I choose to make the shadow. So this will be a little thinner. This one I'm going to make thicker and then. And so this piece is sitting higher than uh, this piece here. And really, then it's just going through mechanically. Um, I don't really put a lot of thought into it, but you might have to until you get comfortable. And a lot, so many things that you draw, as you do it more, it just becomes automatic and you really don't think. Um, I'll draw this one under here. And so, yeah, I'm just interlocking them through that way. And it's just playing with shadow distance and uh, overlapping. And that's that's really all there is to it. Okay. It always makes me laugh when you say, and that's really all there is to it. Like, it's so easy. Anybody should be able to do it. Uh, and I know I can't. Okay, I think you could. And I think you, you guys all could. But it's It's not hard. I think you guys would agree. It's this is why he's such a great teacher. He demystifies and makes it all seem so easy. So Ross Klein wants to know, what is the total animal count on Finch Farm? <laughs> that is a good question. We have five ducks. They're getting big fast. We don't know whether they're boys or girls because they're all the ducklings come unsexed. So and they're Muscovy ducks, which apparently are also incredibly difficult to determine. So who knows what we've got? We have seven, 14 chickens right now. Seven of them are free ranging in and out of the coop. Four of them, because there, there's the original the OGs, the five OGs. Then two I got earlier this spring. I have four more that I got two weeks ago, which are in the barn quarantining until their coop is ready. And then we have Isaac's three 4-H chickens, which are feral. They're a feral chicken. Anyway, yeah. So they're also in the barn. Yeah. They're just babies. And so what did I say? 14, 14 chickens, yeah. five ducks. Seems like a lot. Three sheep, because sadly we was, lost our favorite lamb. And then we have the, the five horses right now with two more to come. They've already been purchased. We're just waiting for them to arrive in August. <clears throat> and that will be it for the time. Yeah, no, for, for good. <coughs> for the first CF whole future. Yeah. Old McMeredith had a farm. I feel like this one's not copyrighted. E-I-E-I-O. Oh, and I didn't include. And on that farm, she had two cats. One in the house and one in the barn. And on that farm, oh, they okay. had two okay. dogs. Please. They were great big Irish wolf hounds. Come on. With a wolf wolf here and a wolf wolf there. Oh, David. Why are you so easy to tease? You know, he who gives it should also be able to take it. Um, that's all I'm going to say. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Daniel Castelli has a super chat for 49. As soon as I start singing. Save you could sing. We might lose. We might lose viewers. Speaking of meeting your heroes, says Daniel. Any plans of doing a con in the DC area? Baltimore Comic Con, maybe. Sorry, I just heard Meredith say, "Compliments make you sad." Uh. I don't have immediate plans to do Baltimore, but the crazy thing is I haven't been to Baltimore for a couple of years and it is one of my favorite shows, if not my favorite show. So I will be there soon. So if not this year, I, I cannot see how I can possibly miss it for another year. Um, so hopefully next year. <clears throat> I mean, they're, they're just a great show all the way around. They are. Baltimore is always a great show. Yeah. Dave Henry wants to know what your golf score was. And he says, be honest. Uh, my golf score was four over par. 
Um, really? That was your actual score or that was the combined team score? That was our combined team score. <laughs> How many of your balls got counted, Dave? Two or three. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. You had best ball two or three times yeah. out of how many times did you hit the ball? Well, you know, uh, three to four to five shots per hole. Hit par per hole. Yeah. No. Yeah. Not many, but. Dave, not the greatest golfer. No. He's no Tiger Woods. Well, I, I went with regular shoes. I couldn't find my golf shoes. My clubs are all covered in dust because I hadn't used them for two years. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we had a good time. Honestly, Truth be told, Meredith. Yeah. I was outside too long over the last couple of days. The second half of it, I was just. You're just fried. Yeah, I just want to be done. Yeah. Which is a shame because it's nice to be out there. There's a fun group of guys that we were with. Oh, yeah. But. Yeah. Jimmy Race Art says eating red meat might not be the problem, Dave. Eating McDonald's meat might be. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that was Meredith's point. (laughs) Yeah. I, I managed to cut out sugar, though. So I got that going for well, me. Yeah, you're doing well. I Tim told keeps Meredith that, and she said you need to cut out carbs. I'm like, okay, come on, giant. What's fine. next? But one thing at a time. Carbs turn to sugar in your body. One thing at a time. Tim Trapania keeps complaining about my mic. Meredith, you are alternately very loud, or your mic is completely out. That's it's, the way it's going to play out tonight, Tim. It's um, because she waves it around in front of her face. I've done this the whole time. You're yelling into it now. See? We've been streaming. I have not changed how I hold the mic the whole time we've been streaming. So it is clearly your soundboard's problem. Uh, yeah, I guess. I, unfortunately, I just don't know how to uh, fix that. It is what it is. I could turn it down. Here's why it is what it is. But because there's only one more week. And then Meredith takes the, the summer, summer off. Yeah. So you only have to suffer with my up and down. Yeah, you're feeling a little punchy. Jeez. <laughs> I'm... No. I'm not punchy. I am punchy. Maybe it's because I'm still drinking wine, just trying to recover my equilibrium. I drank a lot of water. I took a nap this afternoon. I was so tired I couldn't move. That's hard hammy work, like because bending over all the time. By the time we were done, I made Isaac stand in front of me, and I was crawling across the field from rock to rock, putting them in his hands and sending him to the gator to put them in (laughs) to give you an idea of just how tired i was by the end i was crawling on the field on my hands and knees because i am like i don't know if i can every time i would get down i'd be like i don't know if i can get back up again right now i'm so my hamstrings were shot yeah yeah where's um who's the workout one where's our you need to give me some kind of context. On the stream, does the workout? SCS powerlifting. That's it. SCS powerlifting. Where's SCS when you need them? Come pick rocks with me, SCS. Instead, I have to hire teenage boys. I pay good money, so, you know, there's that. I'm just scrolling through. Scrolling through. Because apparently, if I'm reading red meat comments, we're pretty far behind on the stream. Jimmy wants to confirm. Jimmy, we only have two dogs, not four. <laughs> yeah, two dogs. Jamal Rashid has a super chat for four ninety nine. Finch Flock, hey, what's up? Though we lost a great artist, we mourn together, and I pray the Lord wrap His arms around His family and all of us. Yeah, our prayers go to Susie who is his significant other and um, all of his family. Yeah. And for sure. Very much. Thank you so much, Jamal. Mm. All right. Hold on. I lost it. The art of Wade King has a super chat for $5. Just want to say, I hope you guys are doing well and looking forward to the art book and meeting you both in Colorado Springs. You'll meet Dave in Colorado Springs. Meredith will not be in Colorado Springs. And Danny D, yes, it is true that Dave will be in Miami, Florida for a con soon. Yeah, like that's coming right up. Weeks, two yeah. weeks from now or something like that. First weekend of July, I believe. Two, three weeks, but yeah, coming right up. 
coming right up. Your first con in since COVID. Well, I, no. I since, did, yeah. I did two in Canada. Oh, well, fair enough. Your first. First convention. International America. convention. Liam Martin has a super chat for $5. Can you elaborate on why conventions are the best place to get hired? And also, what is proper etiquette for approaching with your portfolio? Um, conventions are the best place to get hired because you have a bit of a captive audience. It's the same reason, you know, you go to a McDonald's, which I would never do. And uh, they ask you if you want to donate at the drive through window. And you say, okay, sure, because you don't want to look like a heel. Whereas if, you know, if it's anonymous, you're less likely to. Well, uh, yeah, so you want to get the same thing with editors. You know, if you're standing right there in front of them, they're, it's much harder to just blow you off. Uh, which, you know, sounds terrible, but it is true. And you can really take advantage of that. They can get a sense of you too, which, you know, is important because, uh, you know, you'd want to establish a working relationship with them. So Dave, can you put your mic closer? Apparently now your volume is it's right here. Hmm. It's right here. It's like right to my face. I want to tell you, and your microphone is like, your volume is turned all the way up. Yeah. So. I got no. But it's not registering? Well, I'm looking and it's, it's not peaking very high. There, I turned up the level. Hopefully that helped. There's the volume, which is all the way, but I could go in and turn up the level too. Uh, it, the best etiquette, I would say, for approaching um, it, it, for uh, approaching anyone, really, is to just go up and ask. Uh, the worst they can do is say no. And uh, I, I certainly had people do that. I, I think I had a couple not the best experiences showing my work. I remember... Um, one artist, he was a, a Marvel artist. I can't, I actually, I have no idea who it was, but uh, we were waiting in line to get a hot dog or something. And I said, oh, you, you work for Marvel? And he said, yeah. And I could see the look on his face was like, oh no, here we go. And uh, then I asked him to look at my stuff, which he did. And uh, it was the quickest glance and yeah, looks good. You know, he, he was not, it was not the right time to approach him. Um, and I'm going to be, honest i didn't care <laughs> you know what i mean if it's not going to work like whatever i was going to show people whenever i could so um yeah I, I just walked up to tables and if anybody was free i didn't care who it was i would ask them if i could show them my work and uh so there were times I, there are people that work the the booth that really don't have much of a, a well or any role in editorial and they would just tell me that and ideally, they would say, you know, so-and-so maybe can help you out. Or I would just get, you know, the blow-off, which, you know, also happened. But, you know, um, don't lose anything by trying. So I would say, you know, as far as etiquette goes, yeah, just just go and and uh, approach as many people as you can. Uh, from artists, you get really good advice. I certainly did. Uh, I got, you know, advice that, that put me on a path to um, getting to where I am for sure from conventions and uh, from editors, um, you can hopefully establish a relationship and and maybe get work. It, it can be monumentally difficult to get work at Marvel and DC at a convention. Uh, I, I know it's happened, but it's, it's like winning the lottery. You're more likely to um, find a mid or smaller level publisher and they're more willing to take a chance on your on you if they like your work. So that would be my advice. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Does that mean my levels are wrong too? Why? Because you're low or high or what? I don't know. I, what I did is I just turned my levels up because I was too quiet. <laughs> and I, I can't put the mic. Says your sound is much better now. Okay. 
So it was low. Um, yeah. You know what? I need to do a, a test with uh, with Eric beforehand. Is it? It's it's been a lot of trouble with the new microphone. At least it doesn't cut out. <laughs> Barbie Exo Curtis Dan says, "Don't fight with the cryways. Yeah. The voice is clear and has been for the last twenty minutes." <laughs> We will fight. That's what we do. We're fighters. It's true. But then we love each other, so nobody holds a grudge. I don't have a good memory. Otherwise, I'd, do I. I'd hang on to this stuff forever. Dumb, so we just forget it. That's right. What's the point of holding a grudge? Especially with your spouse. Really no point. Alright. Scrolling down to the next super chat. From Brad Scott Art for ten dollars. Hola, David. Loving the tribute to the most awesome Tim Sale. Are you taking commission requests at Miami Supercon? And as always, Miss Meredith rocks. <laughs> we'll miss you for the summer, but enjoy your free time. You know what I'm gonna enjoy, people? Sleep. What is sleep? What you're gonna sleep on Monday nights? Is that what you mean? Yes. Yeah. I'm gonna enjoy sleeping <laughs> on Monday nights. <laughs> yeah. Because it is late. 10 o'clock is late for me. I'm up at 5 o'clock every morning. And lots of times I'm up at 4.30 because the kitten says it's time to wake up. Funny, you know, I, I was actually up at 6 this morning. Well, that's because someone <laughs> forgot to put the garbage we out. Forgot to, we forgot to put the garbage out. And it's good that you got up because we got all that crap out of the freezer. Yeah, one of the kids. Um, Left the freezer door open. I'm assuming it's one of the kids. I mean, I, I never go I in that freezer. freezer in ages. Right. Anyway, I, I go into the garage because it's in the garage, and uh, there's a trail of water coming up, and I could see the door was open. Yeah, so and get rid of what was yeah a bunch of frozen meat. And yeah. But that's okay because we're getting our half cow soon, probably this week. If not this week, next week, because I gave him the cut and wrap instructions. So we're going to need that freezer to be empty anyway. Well, there you so go. Now it's empty. It's defrosting today. I'll clean it out over the weekend, and we'll have lots of room for our side of beef. Half, half a cow, that's a lot of meat. Sure is. I won't have to buy ground beef for the rest of the year. Or most, most of the rest of the year, because that lasted us a long time. Yeah. And I have half a lamb coming, but not our lambs, because our lambs are pet lambs. I can't. You can't name something and then put it in your freezer. No, and we really should have saw that one right away. <laughs> you know. They're so cute, though. We love them. They when come to the, they small, wag their you, little tails. Yeah, come on. Feed them with a bottle and they put the little mouth on the bottle. They're so cute. Yeah. You can't you can't eat that. Once you bottle fed something, you can't eat it. I'm going to be honest with you. I think I could, yeah. but I couldn't. But they come. They're so happy to see you. They wag their little tails. They come yeah. to the door to get scratches. They, they are actually avoiding me lately because. They just. They just got um, neutered. Three boys. They all got neutered yeah. on Friday. So yeah. I was I was responsible for that, and I had to chase him around with fly spray, and I had to give a couple of one of them shots because he got sick after the neuter. He got a little bit of an infection, and I'm gonna have to bring him out. And yeah, but they came for scratches today, so they're slowly forgiving me. The great thing mm -hmm. about animals is. Their memories are short. <laughs> uh, yeah. They remember the good stuff mostly more than the bad stuff. I, you know, I think it's like a tipping point kind of a thing. I feel like if that. you're mostly nice to them, then they remember the good stuff. You got to be like super uber nice. But eventually. They're the only people in my life I'm super uber nice to anymore. If my kids only knew that I once talked to them the way that I talked to my animals. When they were babies, they got that voice. Yep. They don't get that voice now. Nope. Mm -mm. Paul Floyd says, Tim was truly gifted and a trailblazer. Same with Mr. Prez and Mr. Sale. Oh, they're talking about somebody else. <clears throat> they changed the industry for the better and in their own way. 100% agree with that, Paul. Yeah. Oh, I missed it. Falling behind in the super chats. All right. Did you answer the, are you taking commissions for? Oh, um, yes. Um, yeah. I think. Okay, so Comic what, Sketch Art. Yeah. www.comicsketchart. Yeah, Comic they, Sketch Art. And they can They're the ones responsible for that. Right. We don't actually know any of that information. Right. So what happens is I go to a convention and uh 
I always have a full sketch commitment right from, you know, the beginning. And then we leave a few slots open for the show. Um, so the best way, I mean, you can just arrange one at the show. The best way, though, is to prearrange it with comic sketch art. And really, the process is the same. Beautiful. Brad Scott Art has a super chat for $20. Another super chat. Dave, you are obviously fast enough and can ink yourself. So two questions. Number one, why don't you do pencils and ink for, inks for works? And number two, why only one pencil page per day? Um, I can do this faster than I can do a, a page. Uh, this has no, uh, no backgrounds. Um, it's looser, certainly, than uh, a page or a cover. And uh, yeah, I, it's, it is a bit of a different thing. It's a sketch, ultimately. So I can afford to be a little bit more loose. And like this face here is, is looser than I would do, truthfully. It's going to be tighter. We're not finished. But yeah, uh, I, I can't... Uh, I can't do work. Now, there are artists that have more of a gestural style. And if I did, I, I certainly could. Unfortunately, I don't. And I just, here's, here's the problem. Number one, I don't want to change. I like doing, you know, kind of detail oriented stuff. I really do. Number two, I become known for doing that kind of work. And if I was working with a writer, for instance, and, you know, uh, we arranged to do a project and I started working in a much more loose gestural style, they would not be happy because it's not what they would have expected. And I've seen that happen actually with artists before where they really go through a, a major change. They decide to try something different and it goes over like a fart in a car with a writer, you know, seen it happen. So that's a factor. And really, I wouldn't want to change anyway. I, I like, it takes me too long, but uh, I like all that little detail. It, all that little detail is what got me into comics in the first place with, uh, you know, the image comics and, I mean, phenomenal artwork with really great dynamics, but I loved all the, like, you know, rendering and detail and it's a big fan of that. So, uh, yeah, you know, I, I, what do they say? You know, what you liked when you're, when you're 12 will always be your favorite thing. I was not 12. I was a little older, but uh, similar enough thing. Still your favorite thing. Still my favorite thing. Yeah. All right. Chromium 187 as a super chat for 10 euros. Master Finch, thanks for all your tutorials. They help a lot. I know this is a rough question to answer, but how long does someone need to practice on average to become a pro comic book artist? Uh, thank you. Um, that is a, a very difficult question to answer, actually, because it's a different answer for different people. I, for instance, when I got into comics, now I had broken in, but I wasn't ready. None of us were. I started at Top Cow Productions as an intern. Uh, and all of the artists that were working there did, for the most part. Brandon Peterson came in. He had already done X-Men. So, uh, But for the most part, we came in new. And um, so we were learning on the job. It took me a long time to really get my feet under me. I struggled very, very badly uh, for a while. And uh, Joe Benitez actually... Um, really, I, I feel like he found his style right away. His biggest problem was more, there was a period where he was really trying to, to fit the, the Top Cow mold. And it's not fair to say that because there was nobody at Top Cow saying, you need to draw like this. But Joe was feeling that. And uh, when he really let that go and just started just doing the kind of work he wanted to do, he really, you know, uh, took off. Um, Mike Turner came in and I, I swear two days later, he was the Mike Turner that everybody um, knew and loved for years. I mean, he just, he learned so fast. I had not seen anybody learn like that before where it just seemed like no effort. So, I mean, and that's the, that's a factor that just, it's difficult to account for. Some people are going to learn faster. I think the key is um, the people that learn faster are not necessarily going to be the people that, that do the best work in the end. Now, you know, there's Mike Turner, so it's maybe not the best example because he did beautiful, beautiful work. Um, but really, it's it's having the uh, 
the willingness to to go through the pain and it is painful learning i mean eric and i especially me right now are going through a lot of pain with painting eric's turned out I'm jealous mine totally didn't i'm having to start again it's a painful thing to fail you know and uh anyway i'm totally not answering the question i apologize my opinion um if you are young you're in your parents basement you don't have bills and you can really focus most of your time on on drawing i think it should take a couple years if you are uh older and you have a family and you have commitments and you can't just spend you know all day long every day drawing well it's it's going to take longer and you do have to be a little bit patient uh with yourself and you know understand also that it's it's a, a building of skill so you know you'll learn one thing uh and that actually might come at the expense of something you learned before and it can it, it can be difficult it can be very very frustrating and then you every once in a while you have that breakthrough and uh that's that's what keeps you going you know where you just have that it's like a revelation and it, it really makes a difference not just in you know a particular part of your art but everything and that will happen you know every especially when you're newer maybe every six months or so if you're really dedicated and uh you know that's that's what really makes it magical Sorry, I was just talking to Eric. He's like, just clip the mic to your nose. And then I I sent him a picture of what the mic looks like. Oh. <laughs> this is a picture I sent him. Why don't you show everybody this picture so they'll understand what I'm dealing with. That mic is not clipping to my nose. There it is. That's a big mic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not clipping it anywhere. It barely fits in my hand. It really should just be on a stand. <clears throat> it was once upon a time. It was, and I promised myself I would get a stand for it and then didn't. And... All right, Warren McSteel. But I'm just in second rate. Says, Warren McSteel has a super chat for $5. i just kidding. I wanted to try selling DC Marvel art as a side hustle, but I read I need permission to make profit off copyrighted characters. How do I get permission? Uh, okay, well, if you want to just, let's say you want to draw a Batman sketch, uh, you're fine doing that. If you wanted to uh, draw Batman and sell it as a print, you're still fine with that if it's your own work, um, like your own picture of Batman, and you do it at a convention, generally speaking. And it's not for me to say that you're fine, because it is actually a violation of their copyright, and they could legally come after you they don't really certainly in my experience and you know that could change at any time but the way that things have been they're very uh, lax with allowing uh people to sell prints of their characters at shows you can't sell any of that online they will shut you down uh it might take a little bit for them to find it but they they will so that's the limitation drawing your own sketches you can do that um as much as you like and bear in mind uh i'm actually not working for dc right now i'm under contract uh somewhere else so strictly speaking i think dc would be contractually within the rights to say no no you can't do this i, I do think that they could they just don't and you know they're um i've been around for a long time and you know companies and and editorial and people get a lot of criticism and uh, I'm sure sometimes it's deserved. I mean, obviously um, it's a, it's a business. Nobody's perfect, but they are, um, they're good people that love comics and they're not out to try and uh, take away somebody's livelihood or mess with anybody, but they do have to protect their trademark too. Thank you. Jordan Seward just sent a little sticker with a super chat for six nine nine, and to give you an idea of how tired I am, I had it's like a little moving thing, like a little, uh -huh. like a little foxy painting a picture and then turns around and it says something on it. I had to take a picture of it with my phone so that I could read what the little fox was saying <laughs> to give you an idea of how tired I am right now and how my eyes, I've just gone like. 
Unscrewy. They've dropped off a cliff over the last month. Anyway, the little fox is painting a little picture sign that says number one. You're number one, not two, not three, okay, not yeah, four. Yeah. You're number one, not two, not three, not four. I know you wish I would just shut the door. Oh, Say no thing. more. Right. You're number one, not two, okay. not three, not four. You're just going to have to suck it up. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. It's 8.55. You've got another 65 minutes of this. Yeah. Random pack. Run out of the ink. That's a super chat. There we go. $5. Random Pat says, hey, Dave, is there any way to actively avoid drawing lopsided art other than constantly flipping your canvas? Um, no, not that I'm aware of. Using yeah, using a mirror, flipping the canvas, uh, the, the, the canvas, those are the ways that you fight it. Um, I had a, a much bigger problem with that than I, I do now. So I think experience um, over the years, you know, you can you can eliminate that. I, there are some comic artists that have a pull in their art and they never lose it, which is fine because there, there are ways to combat it. But um, the ways to combat it are, are what you're saying. It's it's uh, using a mirror. Uh, I don't know of. I don't know of an exercise to fix that. Okay, that's not totally true. You could mathematically start working out your artwork, but it's just not feasible. Like for instance, a really, really big head, if it's directly face on, uh, I, I did a whole series of covers for um, for Walking Dead that way and for uh, Firepower. Um, and uh, I actually draw lines i've got a line for my eye li lined around down the center of the page uh for my center line i actually mathematically work that out because i'll end up with a pull it's just such a big face that i just end up with problems so i i do it for that and then i cheat so i'll do that for one and then i'll use that same underdrawing for like four other ones and then just make adjustments that i need to make in order to make them different people All right, Lee Tasby. Now I need to be careful. <laughs> Lee Tasby has a super chat for $20 US. Hey, Dave and Meredith. Dave, I was wanting to know, how does a DC artist get the Batman unwrapped edition treatment? It's criminal that there isn't a long Halloween unwrapped, a major loss of a comic book titan. Uh, yeah, oh, he absolutely is, is a, a major, major loss. It, I'm going to say my assumption, if there's, it, if there's no unwrapped, it's entirely because they don't have the, uh, the artwork. I know Tim sale would be working more directly with pen and ink. So it makes it a little more difficult. There's just not pencils to, to do an unwrapped and they generally do those with pencils. Um, it, the Batman unwrapped uh, that I did, you know, quite a while ago now, actually has a few inked pages in there because we just couldn't find uh, the pencils. I had lost the scans, DC had lost them. And, and so um, it's not actually perfectly complete, unfortunately. And th that's only like a year after the stuff was published, the files just get lost. So it makes it a pencil, um, a pencil only version of a, of a book of something that is then inked is very difficult. Also, um, it can be difficult to get scans of even inks because uh, we saw the original art and uh, that goes to, to a home it, and it's gone. And if you want, if you don't have a scan of it, it can be really difficult to, to arrange to get it. I've, I've had it a couple of times where I've needed a scan and we've gone back to the person that bought it and they very graciously um, got us a scan. And generally speaking for them to do that, they're, they're going to like a Kinko's or something like it's a hassle but they've done it, which I really appreciate. All right. David, it's 8.59. Would you like to do the... Do, 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 do,
I forgot. <laughs> I forgot the book of the week. Hang on. We're going to wing a book of the week. You didn't make a book of the week? Like oh, day. dear. I'm just going to fill in some time. I don't know what I'm going to do filling in the time, but you don't really don't have a book of the week. I really don't have a book of the week. Just give me a second. So we talked about your golf score. Yeah. But just so everybody knows, you played on a team of four golfers, and it was best ball. So Dave says their golf score was four under par. That doesn't mean Dave's golf score was four under par. It means the best ball of four different people golfing was four over par. Right? Is that right? Four over par, not under par. Yes, Meredith, that was right. That was right. Yeah. Okay. You found a book of the week? I found a book of the week. Do, 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 It's time for the book of the week. Move it. All right. So um, this week's book of the week is is one of my favorite artists. Uh, this is P. Craig Russell. Uh, he is an incredible artist. I got a, a really good deal on this too. Seven ninety nine still says it on the cover. Um, actually, I managed to find this at a, a convention, just in, in a big pile of of other books. I, I think whoever was selling just didn't really realize what it was. I don't know so much what it's worth, but I know it's worth a fortune to me. So this picture here was done in ninety three. That's actually a year before uh, I got into comics. But uh, P. Craig Russell. Um, Drew Elric, uh, which is an absolute classic in comics. I think I, I want to say that I did a P. Craig Russell uh, book of the week before, but he is an outrageously good designer, very, very influential for a generation of artists. I, I know uh, Mike Mignola was, was heavily influenced and actually he inked Mike Mignola on uh, quite a few things years and years ago. And he would just make things even like fabric just really really beautiful i don't see work like this really in nowadays it, things have kind of come away from this and it's much more gestural where something that's really ornate and designed is kind of fallen out of fashion just a little bit which i think is a shame because i think it's really beautiful i can imagine you know a young artist picking up on some of this stuff and uh and taking it somewhere maybe you know making this kind of a style big again but uh, yeah, every book is, or every every page is is great. The storytelling is is really great. Truth be told, I have not read the words, <laughs> looked at the pictures a lot more. But uh, things like this are are just, um, I I can't imagine the time that goes into that. And then things like this, I can't imagine the design sense that goes into that because those are folds, but that is all designed. Every shape in there is so artfully designed and, and perfect and beautiful and uh, well beyond uh, my ability um, to do. I don't know anybody that can really do that kind of thing, uh, quite how he could do it. He also, he does really, really beautiful uh, trees and leaves and that kind of thing. Uh, you can see a little bit of it here. I'm going quiet, just looking at the pic. <laughs> just looking at it, but you know, and I haven't actually looked at this book for for too long. It's been a little bit. Uh... <laughs> I'm totally going quiet. You know what? It's been a long day. Right. He's tired. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. That's four minutes. Okay, four minutes. All right, that's fine. You know what? I'm sorry. Uh, I, I I feel I'm like calling it. I'm such a big fan of P. Craig Russell. It's work that I don't really completely understand. And I, I'm finding as I'm looking at it, I'm just kind of soaking it in. Um, it, usually the work that I uh, have on my shelf is, is stuff that I'm really heavily influenced by. And I'm a little bit with P. Craig Russell. I'm just much more uh, just a, a fan of, of uh, looking at his work. Well, thank this you. has got to be the best page in there. Look at that. See, I'm glad we kept going just a little bit. And all these shapes are absolutely amazing. It's just a beautiful picture. Uh, I'm going to have to read the story at some point to know what's happening. But this is somebody's hair. It's crazy. Anyway, all right. that's the book of the week. And I apologize for my absolutely terrible uh, 
narrative over that book of the week, but it is a great book. This is Fairy Tales of Oscar Wilde, illustrated by P. Craig Russell. Beautiful. Thank you. All right. All right. Next super chat comes from Greg Al's Static Art for four ninety nine. When drawing a torso, more so on a slight three quarter angle, I've been having trouble placing the delts and arms. Any tips? Okay, so I'm sorry, you're gonna have to drawing a torso, yeah. three quarter angle, yeah, delts and arms. Okay. I need to find something where I've got a little bit of room here. Okay, so uh, let me just. So here's a torso, three quarters. Uh, here's my arm. I, I'm going to draw it as a cutout in the underdrawing. I know this isn't really the issue. It's it's more getting the the muscles all to fit together. So let's move on from here really quickly and start to block in our muscle. Okay, so um, the chest, I'm gonna draw a line across for the bottom of the chest. Here's the center line here. I'm gonna come up like this and like this, and that's gonna be the, the shape for my chest is simplified here. And then I've got my, my stomach, and again, I'll just simplify it. And my rib cage is gonna fit in here. And now to get uh, my arm working, what I wanna do first of all is, I've got my clavicle, it's gonna be right here. And my uh, shoulder is gonna fit into that. And if I was gonna draw it like a, just a, a simple shape, it would have, you know, this kind of a shape to it. Really simplified. Raise that up just a little bit. And then my arm is gonna attach below that. But obviously that doesn't answer the question so much either, but I did wanna get the, the really basic shapes in. So my um, deltoid is going to attach right in here into my pectoral. It has a, a flat base here in the arm and the whole thing kind of has a bit of a frontal curve to it. it curves in like this and takes on that kind of a shape. That might be a little exaggerated but it's going to be close enough. And then underneath that is going to be your um, uh, bicep, triceps here. That's a little too much. And uh, this isn't a hard line in the sense that, you know, there's a, a seam here, but there is definitely a, a pretty serious um, recess there. And then all of the striations for your chest are going to radiate out from here. So that's how it fits together. I, if there's something more specific, that's where it gets a little bit tougher. I don't know if you want, you know, the arm raised up. Um, but generally speaking, from a, a three quarter angle, that's that's how I would approach it. So uh, there you go. Thank you. Don't change, Finch. Your work is fantastic. Um, from Sheldon Murphy. <laughs> ah, thank you, Sheldon. I appreciate it. Dan Genovese is laughing at your car in the car joke. And let me tell you, nobody wants to be there. <laughs> Tagamo Model Works has a super chat for $5. Sorry I missed last week. Please, no flogging. Hey, hey, I'm here now. Love you guys. We love you too, Tagmo. And thanks for coming. Yeah, it's thanks good to have you here. here this week. Sounds like Tagamo was late this week, too. Yeah. And everybody thinks Tagamo says, that's not a mic. That's a mic. Because <laughs> the picture is on my mic. Yeah. And Tom McGarth thinks that's an ice cream cone. An ice cream with a cone. Right. You know what it is? It's a mic with the end broken. Taped on. Yeah. So kind of taped on. Yeah. Meredith dropped it. Or so I, did I, I did not it? break it. Anyway, it however, it me. broke. It was so. not me. I don't think I like it was how you tried to blame me, but I know, it wasn't me. I don't think it was you. Johnny D has a super chat for $5. I can't believe Tim Sale has died. I cannot accept it yet. This has truly been a sad year for the comic community. Great people becoming legacies. Yeah, it, it it's um, it's a huge shame. It's nice to see Johnny D here again. Mm -hmm. He's been here for a few weeks too. Yeah. 
The inexorable word nerd has a super chat for $5. Great piece, Dave. Good to hear you, Meredith. You two are great. The inexorable. Looked. I'm here. You're here. You always got to do that, don't you? <laughs> you can't help yourself. Nope. Well, maybe if he didn't have an unpronounceable, <laughs> inexorable word nerd. What's inexorable mean, Dave? Uh, unstoppable would be the closest definition I could give you. And that might be wrong, but that would be, you know, I've never looked it up, but I, I think like inevitable. Right. Fair enough. I told Isaac today that he was my gopher when he, he was sh shuttling rocks for me. And I said, do you know what that means? Because I was sure he didn't. He said, yeah. yeah, someone who does stuff for you. I'm like, yeah, actually, that's exactly what that means. Yeah. Do you know another definition for the word gopher? He's like, yeah, an animal. I'm like, sometimes that kid, man, sometimes he surprises me. He knows things. He knows things. He's like, yeah, the internet. I'm like, you don't randomly come across the definition of the word gopher on the internet. Or maybe you do. What do I know? Maybe you do. Bruno Tito has a super chat for 20 reals. Hi, David Meredith. Say hello to Brazil. Hi, Brazil. <laughs> I have a question about the two sources of light, an example of the Batman face in your live chat. How do you apply the shadow and how the colors interact with the image? Okay. That is a very good question. Let's see. I'm going to. I'm going to have to move it. I finally kind of have it all blocked in with ink, but it's I'm having to lay so much ink on it to get it to go quickly that it's a little wet. All right. Uh, so the face was, well, I'll draw it a little bit bigger. So here's my eyes, my nose, my mouth. I kind of ran out of room there. Let's just draw this in. So here we go mouth. Uh, and this is a little loose, I know, but it's really much more about the shadows. And he had his, um, they're not ears, whatever, ears, bat ears up here. So uh, I know that I want it to be strongly lit here, uh, like this. And so I, uh, I'm going to leave that open. I've got it also lit directly from above. And because I have a real plane change from here to here, I'm going to make this dark. And so let's just do that. And I'm not going out to the sides because I, I don't want it to be totally dark. I could, but I'm kind of, I'm going to leave it side lit. Also, I'm kind of taking the lighting a little bit from uh, Tim Sale's picture because I wanted to have at least some um, uh, similarity to what, what he did. I mean, that's really the point. So I've got that there. Now, this creates a ridge that comes comes upward just a little bit more. Uh, from this angle, probably, you know, it wouldn't really show up much, but I can cheat that. And that's the nice thing about lighting. As long as it's generally true, like if you have a plane that points up, um, but here's a good example of cheating. If I have a really, really heavy light coming from above and my body is here, my head is going to cast a shadow all the way down, like huge. But I don't necessarily want to do that, so I'll just cheat it much smaller. And I know I'm cheating it when I do that, but I'm doing it for that reason because I, I don't want to just completely obliterate my figure. And there are times you make that those sorts of decisions all the time. <laughs> so you don't want to have a shadow where your light is or a light where your shadow is, but you can exaggerate cast shadows. All right, so I've got that. I'm going to leave these open along the side and keep basically that that creates like a. I've got a uh, an, uh, light source above, and then I've got some uh, light just touching the sides of his face. So this is going to be dark under his eyes because, again, that's that's a heavy plane here, and that casts a shadow. This is another thing where I could actually make those eyes totally dark. They almost are here. I kind of lost them because it's loose. I could also really cast these very, very long, too, but I'm not going to because I want to keep it fairly open. I've got a bit of a plane change in my cheek here. Um, and that's a very common thing that 
Batman artists tend to do. And now I'm lighting both sides of the nose and leaving the, the front of the nose open. And I did that because that's what was in the original. That's not actually how I would approach it because I feel like putting shadow on the side there conflicts with what I have here with that light on either side. But I, I want it to be as true to the original as I can. So, and then I'm going to cast a shadow all the way from the nose past the mouth. It's going to all going to be basically dark down here. And that really kind of covers it. That's that's how I did the lighting. I did cheat the nose and uh, and go more with the way that it was in the original. It's not the way that I would uh, do it, which makes it a little more uh, difficult for me to explain. It doesn't make it wrong. Uh, I have my understanding of lighting, and I've found it to be wrong many, many times. So I, I wouldn't want to say, oh, it's w one way is right or one way is wrong. But I would say that if it were to me, and actually, let's just fix it change it anyway. And I'm going to do it more. This is more the way that I would uh, work. And I, I put the light or the, the shadow directly down the center like this. And then I probably would cut this much heavier here. I could do a similar kind of a thing here. And so that would be much darker. And that would be more the way that I would draw that kind of a face. All right. Thank you. Well, Michael Johnson Curry has a super chat for $9.99. At a con this weekend and got to ask Jim Lee if he was breaking in today, how would he get in? And Jim said, talent is good, but having a big social media is what we look at now. How true have you found this and advice? Um, really? I, that's stunning to me, actually. Yeah, that's news to me. Yeah, so we're stunned by that. Actually. I don't know what to say about that. Because I don't think social media sells books. Now, here's personally. what I know. It, it doesn't. And it, it to my mind, it lends, um, there's a, a heavy weight, weighted bias toward artists that aren't drawing uh, pages and are just drawing. Um, Pinups. Yeah, which basically. Generate social media likes. Yeah. But I mean, doesn't mean that you can necessarily draw a comic book page to save your life. Now, I'm not in in charge of hiring at DC, and I'm certainly not an executive at DC. So, I, I mean, me saying I'm surprised by that and I don't think it's true, um, I, I don't mean that I don't think it's true. I mean, I'm surprised by it. We just mean we're surprised by that. Yeah. That doesn't mean we don't. But I, I imagine it could be a factor. I mean, if Jim said that, that must be what they're looking at. But. Well, I'm sure it's, you know, it's certainly uh, um, something they look at, you know. I, I, I personally think it's a sad state of affairs. That you're not getting hired by talent, but by the number of likes you have on your social media account. Yeah, I have to admit, I, I'm, I, I don't I find post on Instagram very often, like hardly ever. And maybe I should be posting more so I could have a bigger social media presence. I don't know. I don't think social media sells comics. I don't think so either. So, I mean, I guess, what do we know though? That's we're not thing. charging, we're not in charge of publishing at DC comics. No. And, so. and look, they're also, they see numbers that, that we don't see. So, you know, w this is a very much an outside looking in and going, gee, I'm surprised by that. We're kind of in some ways, cause you haven't worked on a mainstream book in a while. Yeah. We're kind of outside of it at this point. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I not interiors. And if I do, um, I have a, a track record of sales. So it's a different kind of a, you know, I, I think without that, uh, then it would be more of a factor. So I wish we could help more with yeah. our, that comment, Michael, unfortunately. Allison McGlone has a super chat for $4.99. When is the next portfolio, asks Allison, the next por portfolio review. I have some stuff I would love to show you. Um, Sometime this summer, I'm going to assume. Yeah, actually, this summer, it would be a great time. If Robert is still speaking to you. I'm sure he is. I haven't. You only talk to him when you want something from him. <laughs> hey, look, he's just bad. We're both busy. Yeah. He's no better than I am. Um, yeah, you know what? I'll, I'll talk to Robert Marzullo and uh, to Clayton Barton and see if we can get that arranged again. I, I would really like to. And, you know, again, it's it's been a little while. So, um, yeah. we'll, we'll get on that for sure. Art9 says, Meredith Finch, if I somehow do a drawing of Rose, 
Do you approve of, or of a rose character or whatever? Do you approve of me that I can sell it maybe? Of course. Go nuts. As long as you tag me on Instagram. <laughs> Facebook. Instagram. I'm not never. I'm very rarely on Instagram. I almost never post Instagram. So you're saying that uh, social media is a sad state of affairs. Now you want them to tag you. I I see how it goes. Hey, whatever. (laughs) I know what I said. I did not say social media was a sad state of affairs. I just said, if you get hired based on your social media presence versus the quality of your artwork, that makes me sad. Yeah. That makes me sad that in an artist driven in, in a medium that, there are very few mediums that are so completely artist driven and focused. It makes me sad now that it isn't about the quality of the artwork, but about your ability to, to schlep for social media likes. And I think those are two very different qualities because a lot of artists are introverts and they are not awesome. A lot of great artists are introverts and they're not awesome at social media. Oh yeah, some of and the I think if you made post. that a, a priority or a prerequisite, you wouldn't have Tim Sales and Jay Lee's and Dave Finch's. You wouldn't have those people because you guys, you wouldn't have the Adam Kubert's because you guys are, or um, it's not Adam Kubert I'm thinking of, but Adam Kubert is re- a recluse too. Who am I thinking of? Adam Hughes. Yeah. You wouldn't have these people as comic book artists because that's not what they do. So there's my little rant for the night. Fair enough. The Jenga Ninja has a super chat. But yes, feel free to draw your Rose character. And if you can sell it, I'm thrilled for you. And I want to see it. So tag me. The Jenga Ninja has a super chat. I worked. If, uh, <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I worked at Japan Comic Arts Expo this past weekend and used techniques that I found in your videos and live streams. I just want to say thank you. Oh my gosh, I coughed and yawned through that. I'm so sorry. Well, I thank you very much. Thank you so much. Just, it's like 9.22. This is like the Meredith Witching Hour. And I haven't been, I don't know if you guys noticed, but my cough has been much better. It has yeah. been, yeah. Like it really is. Being out here has been good for me. I, I hope that... Uh, that some of it was useful. Well, obviously, he used the techniques. There you go. Just scrolling so I make sure I don't miss anything. Sorry, hold on, I did. All right. Next super chat comes from Random Pat for $5. Dave, would you consider doing a Joe Casada study stream? I would love to see how you interpret some of his 90s work, stuff like Daredevil and Ninjak. Um, yes. As a matter of fact, I'm summer? totally willing to commit to that. Let me hit my microphone. Yeah, we'll do that this summer. I think that is a great idea. Uh, I'd really like to do it. He's such a huge influence on me. And um, one thing I love about his, his work is it's so really it's dynamic and really in- original and very um very jagged in a way that just reads quickly and easily so i think for a study stream it actually would be really really good some artists uh you know there's there's subtlety to their work that it it's beautiful um i do less well with subtlety first of all so it's harder for me to get that across but it's harder to get across you know quickly in a stream whereas uh yeah joe Casada is one of the the most dynamic, uh, exciting artists uh, ever to to come in in comics, come into the industry. I'm gonna say that I think that Marvel wouldn't be where it is, um, and the industry would be a a different place if he weren't editor in chief. And I'm glad that he did it. He really saved Marvel. Uh, he created, I think, the era of Marvel that that the movies are really being based on now. Um, there are a few classic eras of Marvel, and I think the Joe Quesada era as editor-in-chief is a classic era. And so I'm so glad that he did it. At the same time, I'm so upset because um, 
it came at the expense of, of him doing work. You know, I mean, he, he still did work, but not as much as I would have liked to see. All right. Greg L. Static Art has another super chat for four ninety nine. Greg says, I'm sorry, I meant a little more facing the camera, like the calmly done angle would not fully forward face, though this actually helped for that angle. So calmly when not forward faced. Anyway, whatever you did helped anyway. Well, Greg, we're doing static um next week. So let's talk about it again next week. Just remind me, don't super chat it and we'll we'll give it another shot. Samuel Reyes has a super chat for five dollars. Image is looking great. Team would be proud of it. I hope you're both having a great night. Thanks. Samuel. Yes, thank you. It you know, it really is um actually pretty therapeutic to be able to to come on and talk about it and I'm not much of a uh, share feelings with people kind of person, but you know, I see why people do it. I really do. All right. Jordan Seward has a super chat for $13.99. Jordan sends another emoji character that's bowing and says, thank you. And I didn't need my glasses to read this one. <laughs> thank you so much, Jordan. Oh, Johnny D says, I, Meredith Finch, I think Jim meant that social media helps gain notoriety because many good artists go unnoticed, but media definitely helps. But the real test is doing the work and meeting deadlines. Yeah. Fair enough. That makes sense to me. That does. That makes a lot of sense. And it really, it, it, so it used to be uh, back in the, the 90s and 2000s, uh, the goal as an artist used to be to be on the wizard top 10 list, you know? And there was a lot of, acrimony that came with that list too because uh, the truth is that so marvel and dc would each have a block of artists that they could basically put on that list image if you if you bought ads with wizard um allegedly maybe i should say allegedly so i don't get sued because uh, you know uh, i don't it's not like i have access to it, 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 whatever but you don't know this for a fact this was our understanding of how this works let me put it that way so you know bear that in mind but it, Companies that bought ads, if you, you know, the more ads you bought, obviously, the more people you could put on that list. And so, um, if, for instance, Marvel is is launching uh, Avengers, and they really want to get people behind it, the artist that's on Avengers at the time gets to be on the top ten list, and they are not a better or necessarily more popular artist than artists that aren't on the list. And yeah, that caused a lot of anger at times. Um, and, you know, I was on Avengers. I got on the list. Actually, I was I was on the list for one month during my image run. Uh, and then I, I was on for most of the time I was at Marvel and uh, a good portion of DC. And then Wizard went away, unfortunately. But point being, that was huge for an artist. I remember back in the 90s, being on the, the Wizard top 10 list was like, wow, you're some kind of royalty now. You know, and it really, really meant something. It would actually have an impact on sales and fans were very aware of it. And it, it just generated excitement with wizard gone. Now all of the, the comic press, like if you go to, you know, whatever website that you go to, you'll notice that that stuff, uh, a major event from DC comics will, will appear as an article. And you just scroll down the list and the next article's there, the next one's there. And an hour later, it's 10 articles down the list and forgotten. It makes it so difficult to uh, promote traditionally. And uh, comic companies don't have a huge unlimited unli budget to advertise like movies. So uh, if, yeah, if you want to promote yourself, you need to be on social media. It's true. Yeah, it is true. And that's part of the reason I'm, I'm on YouTube, you know, because uh, without conventions, I thought, oh no, I'm going to, completely disappear off the face of the earth. So start a YouTube channel. Michael Johnson Curry says, Merit to expand that, he said, Gabriel Piccolo was not picked up at a con, said that he wasn't ready for DC, but a few years later they saw he had 2 million followers and they sent editors to him. There you go. Yeah. Piccolo, Gabriel Piccolo. 
Yeah, I, look, two million followers, that's uh, a massive number of people. And um, that many people, it, it's going to move the needle on a book. And sure. But that's like a massive number. Of yeah, people. we're talking about, yeah. you know, that's at least like 10 or 11 followers more than I have. So yeah, just a few, just a few. So yes, I, I could certainly see that. All right. Next super chat comes from the art of Wade King for $20. Typically, if you have a large following as an artist, it's because of the quality. I hate having to post on social media, but marketing yourself is how you compete in 2022 when you have artists from other countries competing. Fair enough. We're not, we're old. We're At the old. same time. Look, I'm old. The fact is I see very, very good uh, artwork on Instagram all the time that has almost no following at all. Um you know, I, I, I've done comics long enough and I've been published long, long enough that I have name recognition. So it makes it pretty easy to, to reach an audience and for people to find you. But if you're new, uh, that can be a very difficult thing for sure. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, it's not a fair world. That's for sure. All righty. Goku... Kakaro, Kakaro, I hope that I said that right. Goku has a super chat for five dollars. Would you be willing to draw your take of some Dragon Ball Z characters one of these Mondays? It would be really cool to see. Uh, yes, for sure, and I think that'd be a lot of fun. Uh, I've been kind of, you know, I, I started out really just doing comic characters, and you know, eventually you kind of branch out, do some different things, and I think that would be an, a lot of fun. I, I'm going to tell you guys right now. I actually thought that I was going to draw a Sonic the Hedgehog before the year was out with uh, with Meredith before the summer. I was kind of looking at doing that. Really? Yes, because, you know, Isaac's such a huge Sonic yes. fan. And I thought, oh, he'd love it. And it'd be fun. It'd be so different. It'd be totally wild. Um, I have not had the, the chance to do that. I mean, it, it's... Do that in the summer. Don't do that when I'm here. No? No. Why not? Oh, come on. How... How much can you do? Like, it's Sonic. It's Sonic. <laughs> All right. Maybe we'll do it in the summer. Yeah. It's like a half hour sketch. It's not worthy of... I'm sorry. Sorry to all you Sonic fans. It's not worthy of two hours. Could be. I don't know. Could draw Eggman with his big robotic egg. Yeah, fair enough. Anyway. Right, like five characters just to make it last the two hours. <laughs> Rob D has a super chat for $5. Resist the urge, Dave. I absolutely love the high contrast, less rendered style here. Well, I love the rendered stuff too. Who am I kidding? So it's, he likes it more without yeah. the rendering? Yeah, don't render it, he says. Resist the urge. I know. What? Well, look, it's already too late. You're rendering it? Yes. Now, I'm not getting too carried away. Don't go nuts. But I, yeah, I could do a, a looser style and, and it would just be finished. I just... Not you. It's not me. He's he's finishing up his Tim Sale piece. And uh, that doesn't necessarily mean improving it, that's for sure. No, he's just finchifying. But it is what it is. It's becoming the finchified. All right. <sighs> Jonathan Masters has a super chat for $10. Thanks for being a fellow lefty. I'm curious to know if you see any advantages or disadvantages to drawing left-handed. Sia Um is another lefty, and I'm curious what you think about her work. I am not familiar, and I should be, especially We've the... talked about her on the stream. Okay, sorry, who? Sia Um. I don't know if I pronounced it correctly. You weren't super familiar with her work, and okay. I'm sure you have not become more familiar with her work I know. Uh, I'm sorry. Now, um, truthfully, I, I would say that it's more disadvantages than advantages, because, like, now it's, it's not really a disadvantage. It's fine. All the time at conventions, people come up with a, a sketchbook and it's got a binding and sometimes I'll even have rings. And then I'm over that with my hand trying to negotiate that. And I've gotten pretty good at it over the years, but you know, and scissors, scissors are a problem. That's not really a drawing issue though. 
but yeah, otherwise, you know, it, it seems like it's, I don't know of any specific drawbacks or, or advantages. I, I will say, I don't feel like I have the, um, the really, really tight control of, of some artists, but I don't know that that's a left or right hand thing. That might just be more just me. I'm sure it is. Everybody's disagreeing with me about Sonic. They think that Sonic would be awesome. See? Ha. So there you go. There we go. Samuel Reyes says, Dave Finch, Death Egg background would use up all the time. Super Sonic goes, Sonic is great. No bias here, says yeah, Super really Sonic. <laughs> See, you have to do it just for that. Zay says, Sonic, Star Star. There you go. Yeah, I would have such a good time with that, too. All right, well, maybe end next week with Sonic. I can't. Or, oh, you're going to do Static. That's right. Nah, Knees says, nah, Sonic has had terrific art over the years. You're wrong. Did I already read that one? Um, No. Yeah. I read it once already in my mind, so... Sometimes you can't remember what you've read in your mind and said out without with your mouth. Fair enough. There you go. I am actually yeah, I'm kind of keeping this a little bit less rendered than I can at times. So Alice McGlone says, I had a friend that flipped her sketchbook over and drew that way since she was left-handed. Yeah. The problem is that people don't appreciate that when, you know, there's a, a sketch by this artist and then this artist and then whoops flipped open that does not go over well so yeah if you're drawing someone else's sketch right if it was my own oh i would flip it for sure but i have found what i end up doing is i'm just kind of over it and i rest my hand like you know my pinky down over it and it it's it's not the most comfortable but it works and i've found actually it's less common it used to be much more common. People would come up with sketchbooks. Now it's it's not quite as common. What do you know? You don't know what's common. You haven't been to a convention for two years. Okay. not Two years ago, it was less common. <laughs> Maybe it's a fat again. You're out of date, Dave. Yeah. Out of date. We're both out of date, though, so. Yeah, we are. Oh, this couch kills me. I feel like I complain about this couch around this time, sometimes sooner. Well, you'll be glad to know that we are done. Um, no, but that's too finny. We're getting there. All right. We're getting there pretty fast. I really had a great time drawing this one. It looks amazing. Well, I mean, it, it does. Look at it. Yeah. Because Tim is a genius designer. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's all the design. Like that. Yeah, it's 100%. I mean, you're great, but look, it's the design. Well, I picked the the shot just because it's such a striking shot. Yeah, you know, sometimes doing these sketches, uh, like the uh, George Perez Wonder Woman, it, it makes me think, wow, you know, I, I didn't try that before, and I really should have because it just it's, it just really works. This is why I always say, you know, drawing. Um, studies of other artists is so important because i feel like i really learned a lot with with this one just with the whole design of the cape not something i would ever have done and this is like the coolest cape i've ever done and it, i'm just copying his cape uh, that's lovely yeah oh tim if only you were here we could this is this, what the crappy part is you know tim would love this piece he would be honored, I think. I think. I like to think. How about that? Tim respected you as an artist, so yes. So, But it's sad that he doesn't get to see it. I still have a picture that I bought from Tim. Um, because COVID hit, it's still actually with Jason. Uh, he was both of our art dealer, actually. Oh, and, really? Yep. Yeah. And it's a double-page spread. I bought it. How do I not know about this? I hid it from you. Oh, fair enough. I'm not always supportive of your art purchases. Yeah. And it wasn't cheap. <laughs> so anyway, we have a Tim Sale double page bread that I really love. And uh, at some point we need to pick it up so we can frame it and put it up here. Well, I'm sure you'll see Jason at the convention. I will. Actually, I'm Tim Sale, it. the only artwork that is allowed to hang in my kitchen, the only comic artwork that is allowed to hang in my house, Yeah, actually, aside from your Aphrodite 9 piece. 
Uh, that's true. Yeah. 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 That one's up there. Yeah. But Tim's the only other non Dave art that hangs in the comic art that hangs in my house. All right. Well, I am going to go ahead and leave it there. You're going to write after. Yes. Yeah, I need to. Yeah, the last thing I want to do is in a tribute stream, copy his artwork and then forget to credit That's him. right. Johnny D is the last super chat of the night with a super chat for $5. Dave and Meredith, thanks for your work. This has been a great tribute to Tim. And I'd like to thank the community for being so great. I love being a flocker. We love having you, Johnny. Love all our flock. Ross Klein says, I have to take a page out of your book and start buying more art. Not buying it, buying it and not telling his wife. <laughs> That's the only no, way Ross. Not, Dave believes it's better to ask forgiveness. I've been burned that way a few times too. Though. He has. Yeah, he has been, been burned. He has been burned that way. Once or twice. That's not worked out for me. Yeah. No, no. In some, some pretty major ways. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good philosophy most of the time. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so. All right. Yeah. David, it's gorgeous. Thank you, Meredith. That was a. Uh, did you sign it too? I did. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You make your signature so small. It's like so teeny tiny. All right. All right. <laughs> anyway, thank you everyone uh, for uh, watching this week. Hopefully you guys have a, a great week uh, coming up. Um, I have a tutorial video that I, I had just put out. I think I want to say Thursday. Uh, it just came out. Uh, part two will be out uh Two days. I'm going to commit to two days. I'm going to try for tomorrow, but I, just to give myself the window. It's all he filmed. might have to pick rocks tomorrow. Yeah, so. well, it's all filmed. It's actually mostly edited. I just need to put it out there. And all three parts will be out within the next week. So part one's already out. Uh, I didn't want to just, you know, play this out forever, but I also thought it was ridiculously long for, um, for one video. Uh, and I feel like it gets more interesting as it goes. Hopefully <laughs> we'll see. But, uh, yeah, um, <clears throat> once again, um, d d devastating news, losing uh, Tim Sale. And uh, I hope that this is really uh, more of a, a celebration of, you know, Tim, his artwork and uh, and Tim as a person than, you know, than something sad. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm glad you guys could share it with us. And. Don't forget, next week is the season finale of Monday Night with Meredith and Dave. It's not the end of day for the summer. Yep. Well, I'll still be doing this weekly. We'll be switching to Tuesdays, uh, barring it's it's Tuesdays. We'll be doing Tuesdays. Um, and we've got a few lined up already. We will be doing a Joe Quesada, uh study stream. I think that is a great idea. I'd like to do that fairly soon. Uh so, yeah, I'm All right. excited and about it. Now the last Super Chat goes to Greg Alsatikard, who says, for $1.99. Looks great, Dave. Great tribute. All right. Wow. Thanks, Greg. All right. Everybody have a great night. We will see you next week. Stay safe and be well. All right. Good Thank night, you. Everyone.